Hey there folks, welcome back. So today's e-bike ride is around Taolien, District 2, Saigon. And the topic is healthy living, healthy lifestyle. Can you live a healthy lifestyle in, in Vietnam? And should you, is it important? Well, yes, of course. However, many people struggle to stay healthy here. And I'm not just talking about physical health, I'm also talking about mental health. There's many factors here like loneliness, depression, anxiety is, is fairly common amongst expats in general actually, not just in Vietnam. So I want to reflect on that today, give you my thoughts, a bit of commentary as we go around Khao Dien, which is the expat area in Saigon in District 2. So what are some of the challenges you may face in regards to health when you're an expat living abroad or, you know, in particular living in Vietnam? Well, there's some inherent issues here in regards to health. There are things, things like the traffic. It's pretty dangerous here on the roads and if you're venturing out, you kind of are risking your life a little bit at times. Even more so perhaps if you're on a bicycle like myself. I don't have a motorbike anymore. I probably will get another one actually because I do miss it, but I tend to do most of my errands and most of my traveling around on this wonderful e-bike here. And I do love it. I think it's a great, great bit of kit. I do recommend it. Pollution in general here is a kind of a, a big factor. And air pollution is typically quite high, 60 to 70 on the AQI scale, often above 100. And if you're in the north of the country, it's really bad actually. It's typically above 100 on most days and can go as high as 200, even higher actually. So for a long-term expat living here, that's something that you would definitely need to think about. And if you're gonna have kids here, you know, they're gonna be exposed to that high level of air pollution from the, the moment they're born. And that's going to have a cumulative effect on their health. The other issue is noise. Yes, horns. People love to use their horns here. It's one of the great mysteries of Vietnam. Why do people use their horns so much? Uh, maybe it's because of frustration, because it's so busy. Maybe it's because, well, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Why do people use their horns so much in Vietnam? I think it's a, a bit of a mystery to me. So it's not just air pollution, it's also water pollution. You can't drink the tap water, it's not potable, you need to buy in bottled water. And it's quite difficult to actually see the analysis, get an accurate analysis of that bottled water. And it's a video I want to do in the future, I want to do some analysis of water here. So I'm going to buy some different water brands and I'm going to take them to the laboratory and test them. Although, I will tell you that when I mentioned this idea to somebody, they told me to be very careful of doing that. But I think it'll be okay. So hopefully in a future video, I'm gonna be doing some uh, microbiological analysis of water samples. Watch this space, guys. I did a big, a big, I did a video on food, food safety in Vietnam fairly recently and that's one of the things that kind of worries me a lot. Sort of pesticides, antibiotic resistant, antibiotic use in foods. It's a bit of a assault on your health. You know, it's not an issue if you're coming here for a few weeks or months as a tourist, but if you're coming here to, to live for years and years, then potentially these things can bioaccumulate, build up in your in your system, and be quite detrimental to your health. I think it's important to choose uh, the right place to live here, and the big cities like Hanoi, Saigon, and to a lesser extent Da Nang, they're pretty hectic, and in my opinion, more aimed towards younger younger people. A lot of people, you know, live in Tao Dien here and in District 7 in the south. 
and it's kind of the bubble we call it the expat bubble because people don't tend to venture out much from the parts I'm showing you now as I go around you've got everything you need here you don't really need to go out if you don't want to I don't really blame people for you know staying here I myself I live fairly close to here and it's convenient the main reason for me is to be away from the super hectic traffic I couldn't live in D1 D4 uh, Funia and District 3 it's just absolutely crazy and the traffic's really ramped up in the last couple of weeks like it's got absolutely hectic everywhere and it's not very pleasant to go out you know before 9 a.m. or after 3 34 it's super super busy and dangerous as well so what can you do to look after your health if you're living in Vietnam well the same as what you would do anywhere else in the world really keep yourself fit exercise number one exercise above everything else if you exercise your health markers will improve right across the board so we're talking about things like blood glucose control lipid values in fact regular exercise one of the biggest factors when looking at things like all-cause mortality so that is death basically so if you exercise regularly your chances of dying come down quite a bit what kind of exercise can you do here well you can ride a bicycle of course like me you can hit the gym gyms are pretty cheap here there's plenty of sports clubs around you can play tennis badminton football things like that how about checking your health in Vietnam well it's actually really really good for that here and I'm gonna be doing a couple of videos in the next couple of weeks where I venture into different hospitals I'm gonna take you guys into uh, a public hospital or a government-run hospital and I'm gonna take you guys into a private hospital so we can compare the difference and I'm hoping they're gonna let me film I'll just show you the basic layout and what it's like inside but there's a huge huge difference and one of the differences is of course the price I'm very lucky that I've got good insurance so I can pretty much go to any hospital but if you don't have insurance or if you're on a budget then you would have to go to a government hospital and they're categorized into different levels and the level corresponds to the price but one of the things I like is I can I can go in and do kind of more exotic blood tests and checks if I like to so every three months I'll typically go to an international hospital pick up any regular medication I need and do some checks through my insurance I don't pay anything for that it's fantastic it doesn't cost me a single dollar but every six months or year or perhaps annually I'll go into uh, a public hospital where I can just walk in and literally just pay 15 20 dollars I'll probably get about 10 blood markers checked things like uh, ApoB which is a lipid value and I'll do things like fasting insulin I'll also do a hormone, hormone panel so I'll check uh, ultra sensitive estradiol testosterone we'll do um, thyroid hormones as well and these are slightly more exotic and a bit more expensive in international hospitals but super super cheap and easy to do in the public hospitals so I'm going to show you this guys hopefully next week show you what it's like what are some of the pitfalls here what's going to get you well obviously roads kind of self-evident that it's pretty dangerous but I think the thing that gets neglected or not talked about often or, or perhaps not talked about so much although a bit more these days is you know is mental health and mental health amongst people who are living away from their home country it's quite a big thing you know there's a a lot of loneliness here you see a lot of people in bars by themselves and even people in relationships maybe they're not with the right person you know it's just because you're with someone doesn't mean you're, you're not lonely sometimes so this is one of the big international schools BIS they're coming coming into pick up time 
you can see every single person drives a car one kid in each car it causes absolute chaos So one of the big issues here in regards to mental health is loneliness and depression, I think, as well. And people can get sucked into, you know, drinking because no one's going to call you on it here, right? No one's going to judge you. It's not like you're going to get chucked out of a bar for drinking too much. You're typically going to be encouraged to drink more here. And bar staff here, you know, very nice. They look after you. And yeah, I mean, I've seen it many times. People get sucked into bars and it affects their mental health and of course their physical health. And it's a vicious spiral. You get more unfit, more unhealthy, and it's not good. But I can see how easy it can happen. So it's something to be very aware of. And it's not just, you know, Vietnam. It's, 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 it's not just Vietnam. It's kind of any country, um, Thailand as well which are popular with expats. You see this kind of thing quite a lot. I think routine is very important. Having said, even if it's a rough routine, having something to focus the mind on, whether that's work, study, hobbies, perhaps all three, if you're feeling adventurous. Get around these guys, logging up the roads. one of the problems with Howdy N here. Nice place to live but terrible road planning. Just one road that kind of goes around the, the area and it just gets rammed at certain times of the day. So what do I do to keep myself healthy? Well, I wouldn't say I'm a super healthy person. Uh, I'm the same as anybody else, but I do try. Especially now I'm in my 40s and I'm a bit of a health, I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to science so I'm, I read a lot of studies and I'm quite into the field of health, nutrition, things like that so I'm quite interested in the longevity, longevity drugs and things that extend life, just out of interest really but. So for me, I cycle. And I hit the gym two to three times a week. I don't train with weights like I used to. I used to in my 20s, so 20 odd years ago. Used to lift pretty heavy. Used to be quite a big guy, over 100 kilos. These days, not so much. Although I still love it. I love training in gym. And resistance, ex resistance exercise is one of the best things you can do for your body. It really is. Reduces insulin resistance. You have a kind of metabolic afterburn, so you're burning calories for a long time after you train. Obviously, VO2 max, so when you're talking about cardio, is also, oh, very healthy. But you really need to combine resistance training with cardio. Otherwise, once you get into your 40s and 50s, you start to lose strength. You start going to get problems with your ligaments, your joints. You're going to feel pretty... You're going to, you're going to be aching, you're going to be easily injured so I recommend anyone to combine resistance training with cardio if, if you can make it part of your day part of your routine and that'll also improve your mental health you get the old endorphins released from exercise you'll feel good feel more confident and yeah all positive stuff right So do I think you could be healthy living in Vietnam? I think, yeah, absolutely. But I think you have to try a little bit harder here because there's a lot of temptation to be unhealthy, especially with food and drink. 
And there's also a temptation to be a bit lazy because transportation, like grab, bike, things like that, are very cheap. Motorbikes cheap to run as well if you buy a motorbike, so people can get a bit lazy, just use their bike to go anywhere. So you have to work a bit harder. One of the negatives as well here is like, it's pretty shitty for walking. I mean, I love to walk and it's just not a good city for walking at all. And partly because of the heat, but also because of the traffic and there's just no real pavement as you can see. You're gonna be walking on the road, which isn't, isn't particularly healthy in itself anyway. So there we go, folks. I just wanted to touch on health in Saigon and Vietnam. And I'm going to expand on this topic in the future with some hospital visits. And we're going to do a deep dive into some, some tests, why I think you should do them, why I recommend. And I'll let you know what I do myself and why I do those tests. Okay, I'm going to head back rain soon. Take it easy, folks. Have a good day wherever you are in the world.